Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. All right, so we are live on Facebook for the book club of The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli. You're good vanning. I am good vanning. What was that? Okay, so we're going to get out of... Hey, Peggy! We got got people on here. They probably know what they're doing a little more than we do. Maybe. So we thought that we would try doing the book club through a live Zoom on the Facebook group this month to see how this goes. We're seeing a little bit of a delay, so yes. really apologize if you're not and you ask us something. Um, but yeah, so I guess do we just want to get started talking about the book. We are going to do like what, like once a quarter or once every once in a while, just a book, right? Either written by a cast member or about anything that you can relate to General Hospital in any way. Yeah, pretty much. So we thought that this was really good. This was really good. <laughs> So do you want to get started with, I don't want to talk about each of them individually, because I feel like that's going to ruin the book for people who haven't read it yet. Okay. So what one did you find most unbelievable? So let's give a little bit of a breakdown about exactly what The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli is. It is a novel that was written in 2011 by Carolyn Hennessy, who actually plays Diane. And we are reading this straight from Wikipedia. (laughs) The novel is a tie-in to the television soap opera General Hospital, as the writing and publication was also featured on the series. Totally forgot about that, and we should have gone back and watched those episodes. We should have. Oops. So the background is that it, so it was a storyline during late 2010, early 2011, and it featured Damien Spinelli enlisting Diane Miller to help him write a novel based on his private investigator persona. In January 2011, it was announced that the book would be published. The book was written by Carolyn Hennessy, who is known for her Pandora book series. And that's a really fun series. If you have tween kids, it's a really fun series. The book was released April 5th, 2011, which coincided with the series 48th anniversary. Hennessy said of the book's connection to film noir, it's not just a nod, it's a whole interpretive dance. When I was approached to write the book from Damien Spinelli's point of view, I was made I was able to incorporate my intense love of film noir and noir fiction. And then she goes on to just name a bunch of people and talks about what fun she had. And she actually got, went and talked to some of the cast members and said, it's like she went to Jane Elliott and she said, you know, I'm writing a chapter about you in the book. Would you mind acting out a scene for me as Tracy? So she could get like the flavor of writing and everything. So I thought that was really neat that she really, I think she captured everyone. Perfectly. Mm Because you could hear their characters in your head as you were reading the book. Yep, exactly. So each chapter is a different character. And Spinelli is kind of crazy. Ridiculous. (laughs) In the way that we love him. But he's definitely even one step up more. More than one step up. More ridiculous than. (laughs) I think it's more than one step. He's, He's taking it to a whole new level here. Yeah. I've had a day, so I'm having some wine. And it's book club. You need some wine. I there forgot to offer you some. Do you want okay, some wine? Thank okay. you. So my favorite. Okay. My favorite was when he was talking to Jax. Okay. About the cards. Mm-hmm. And apparently Jax is 63 years old. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and his dad. Hold on. That was, was like something. 120 or something like that. So this book, actually, I use friction pens a lot and friction highlighters, and mine dried out. This book actually made me buy a new pack. Wow. Sooner than, I haven't really had to highlight a lot lately since quarantine. And I was like, no, 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 I need to highlight the heck out of this book. And that chapter is what, oh, I can't find it now. But yeah, so Jax is talking about when the dead man's hand and everything, and then he tells... And just says about how, you know, he's really old, but, oh, here it is. He found a gray hair or pure white hair. Yeah. Jax is 67 and a half. And my father died when he was 107. 
<laughs> just that crazy. Was, that was a little bit unbelievable there, Smelly, but okay. Yep. What about you? What was your favorite? So my favorite one was when he rescued Edward. Yes. Just because I liked, I liked the whole thing. It felt somewhat maybe realistic, even though it's not really realistic. So explain the story um, of Edward. So Alice called and said that Edward was missing and she had no idea where he was. And Spinelli used his sleuthing to figure out that he was on the family yacht and he was looking for a ghost for Lila and he wanted to reconnect with her and he got caught in a bad storm and Spinelli was able to rescue him and use the little life preserving boat to get him back to shore. But just the way he spoke to him, the fact that Edward was looking for Lila. We love Edward and Lila. I know. So that was my favorite one. And it really is. You could really hear everyone in this. Yes. Yes, Peggy. We did read um, Nothing General About It by Maurice. It was actually the April Book Club. I like that this is interactive. Though. Thanks, Peggy, I know. for yeah. asking questions. Great question. Awesome. And we did do a similar, well, we didn't do it live on Facebook, but we did have an episode of our podcast that went over the book. Right. We met through Zoom for that. Yep. If you have a suggestion for a book that you think we should read, by all means, you know, feel free to suggest it below I, or in the comments. I keep hearing rumors that there is going to be a nurse's ball. So I think we should do Robin's diary. Okay. And I just bought it. So not that I haven't been dying to do that for months anyway, but it makes sense that it ties into why we would do it now. I I feel like we talk about this a lot, especially after they just did a lot of the flashback episodes that we've come a long way from the way that we talk about things. Cause the way that he talks about Maxie, I know like she can't go to the bathroom without sleeping with two or three guys. Yes. And she's an idiot, like basically insinuating he, she's dumb. Right. And right. He can't go get popcorn at the movie theater. Cause she's going to hook up with someone. Exactly. Like he's there. It, it, that was awful. I was shocked at some of the stuff that he said about her. And I did forget to mention why Jax was, so upset so Jax was going to jump over the ledge because he found a pure white hair at 67 and a half right for the first time it was, that was so ridiculous it was and then he talks about he talked about something with um how he was with Sam but then so was Sunny yes that got brought up mm -hmm. I think not my least favorite but the one that I thought was most unrealistic not that they weren't all unrealistic but the one that was the worst was the one with kate howard okay i didn't there was just like she did everything he was erasing for some reason he was erasing her memories not like her memories not like a brain transfer but anything that could thing. be traced yes yeah so no one else would know what she had done because she just wanted to settle back home and not be bothered by all of that but she had like saved the world 20 times over the way that he said it and i i just didn't think that was in any realistic. Way, realistic. I'm not sure why she was a character that they picked to, to write a chapter on. They did mention a lot of different places in here. So the Port Tor Charles oil refinery. Right. You know, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's ever been. Oh, and they mentioned that other coffee shop. Yep. That we've never heard of yep. before in our life to get I novels. highlighted that also. I just kind of dog your stuff. I didn't get creative with the highlighter, but I'm not surprised that you did. Of course. <laughs> Well, and then you frequently hear, so basically Spinelli is sitting there talking to Diane and it's very late at night and all she wants to do is go home to Max, have a pint of haagen and other things. Mm -hmm. And she keeps digressing in her mind. And so it's really written very nicely where you hear Spinelli telling his story, but then in bold, it talks about Diane and her, seriously, Mr. Jackal, like, this is ridiculous. You yes. have got to, well, and we mentioned this on, when we were talking about Night Shift, his fear of clowns was mentioned in this yes. too. Like he, Spinelli used to be an acrobat. Right. You know, he used to be a famous gymnast in Russia. Something about a throwing chickens act that he didn't want to teach the other kids. Mm -hmm. He frequently talks about the fact that he doesn't know his parents or his family. Well, I don't think I ever realized that. Neither, I mean, I'm sure I know it, it but right, yeah, exactly. I'm sure it was mentioned somewhere, but I don't think I realized that played any significant part in his life. And then hearing him mention it over and over again, that should be a storyline they follow a little bit. Yeah. So one of the things that Diane wrote was we settled into a booth at the night owl 
a cozy joint that I'd that I'd have to remember for those times Max and I got the post nookie munchies. Mm-hmm. The, so the night owl is also a bar that I guess they did not ever talk about. Right. That we've never heard about when Alan was haunting Monica. And it said, from what I hear, tell Prince Charming, that's all you ever were. He was Prince Charming in Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella yes. with Leslie Ann Warren. Um, I like Love how that. he called Alan out because Alan said something about he just he didn't want to cheat on her in the afterlife. Right. He wanted her <laughs> to join him. And Spinelli was like, mm, I seem to recall you had some problems with that when you were among the living. Yep. No, that was definitely a great storyline. But the Alan story, I felt, yeah, not believable, was, but believable. I felt like it was so real that it was very... I thought it was very touching because yeah. Alan's coming back and he's like, you know what? I kind of really sucked as a husband on earth, but you know, I'm dead now. Can I get a second chance? Can you join me? <laughs> Which was a little selfish, but hopefully his intentions were good. Yes. The one that I found the most unbelievable was Elizabeth. See, I didn't find that unbelievable, but I was mad that they took such a negative tone to it. Well, how do you mean? So basically Elizabeth has a side gig as an abdominatrix. I love it. I thought, okay, I loved that (laughs) phrase. So Elizabeth needs some extra money and she basically shames people into working out while being dressed as a nun, a firefighter, a cop, what else? A school teacher, stuff like that. But I got hazard, what's it called? A hazmat suit. Thank you you know, all these different things, but lucky. Oh, and that was Lucky's like my wife, my ex-wife. I don't even know what the heck to call her anymore. <laughs> I didn't like that part though, because I feel like Lucky and Liz do have a good enough relationship that if he had questions, he would have come right out and asked her. He wouldn't have hired Spinelli. So I found that part not very nice, but they made comments about her hooking up with multiple people. Yes. And then like, which daddy is, she calls her I just call her the maternal one since she has all those kids by all those different, uh, (laughs) exactly. So then they kind of insinuate that they think she's running, like she's being a hooker out of her house when the kids aren't home. Did you watch Desperate Housewives? Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. Amanda knows a show that I am going to talk about. Yes. (laughs) Mark this down in history. It's a show, not a movie. That's the there difference. are plenty of shows that you have not known what the heck I was talking about. No, so we are going to chalk this one up. Go ahead. All right, you can take the one. Okay. Gold star for me. This Gold week. star for Amanda. <laughs> Good job. When Susan winds up doing that cleaning service yes. web camp, that's, that's exactly what I was of. Exactly. And yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Especially in this, Elizabeth has a mask on. You don't even know what it's for. Now we all know what Amanda will not share during her reality Oh my track. goodness, I wish... I am not driving around in a Mercedes. You're a redhead. I sure. bet people would definitely go for it, Amanda. I don't know if you could say that about redheads, but thanks. Mm. Mm. There's fetishes for everything. There is. So I don't know. I would anyway. Back to Liz. I don't think I could be dedicated enough to work out as much as Liz obviously was in order to run and this side. You're getting paid gig. like that, but I would be tempted. I didn't see anything wrong with it, and and Liz like has a breakdown and says she needs to go. The therapy and back to the mental institution. Yeah. No, that was taking it a little far. That was definitely taking it a little bit too far. And then there was, oh, I think the most believable was crazy Helena because okay. she would totally. So Alexis called Spinelli and needs help because Helena has taken her captive and the girls back to the island in Greece and he goes to rescue her along with Nicholas. Mm-hmm. Nicholas happens to be on the plane. Yep. And it turns out that Helena has forgotten or you know is having issues remembering and so she thinks that alexis is alexis's mom and so she's going Kristen. to yes so she's going to give her back her voice that she took from her whenever she killed her by slitting her throat i think elaine is that crazy uh, i definitely think well and given the age so there's a chance that you know she was so worked up in her life about her husband having this affair and having these kids outside of their marriage that right. it could have tripped some kind of psychosis. Yes. That <laughs> Christina was Alexis's sister's name. Yes. So that was supposedly what started it, was she heard Alexis call Christina, Christina. Yes. And then they were talking about Dave Cates. Yes. And I wanted to know if he was related to Jack or it else. has to be, right? <laughs> I would think, but I don't know that they've ever said that. I don't know. 
one of the ones that I would really love to see that. So I feel like I maybe was not watching when this took place, but I still feel like I would know if this happened when Jason Spinelli dressed in drag. Yes. I don't remember that. Do we say drag? Is that when they dress up like women because Sam yeah, yeah, was because they say drag queen bingo. So it's drag. Yeah. But there's a difference. I feel either way. Everyone knows drag queens are drag it. queens. Like they, that's their thing. These guys are just dressing up as women to get close to Sam so that they can. I still think that would be drag. Okay. That's my opinion. I don't know. So if I just said something wrong, I'm really, I'm sorry. I think everyone knows we're not trying to offend anyone, but I think that that's what it is. If you're doing it as a costume, Maybe. It's not part of your identity, then. But that totally has to be something. We should that see they, if we can find a clip of that. So basically, that Sam is distancing herself from Jason. You know, she's realizing he won't commit. And Jason's talking about all this that, you know, Sam just doesn't know how committed he is and like he right. does want to be. And so I guess she's off joining a band playing the bongos. <laughs> Wearing she a blonde wig. Eddie Main first and been one of his group. Right? That would have been so much better. <laughs> and then, so Jason and Spinelli join and Jason plays the piccolo. Okay, Jason plays the piccolo. Mm -hmm. So they join the band and they go on the road with them and everything. And Sam talks about Jason's eyes. Look familiar, but not as nice as Jason's. But she doesn't know that it's Jason. Right. And then they go for a walk on the beach and she goes skinny dipping. And he's like, I'll just stand here and drool. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> but long story short, they actually come out to reveal Sam. their identities. And, you know, they get together. And the Dante one, I wasn't quite sure about. Mm -mm. So Dante gets poisoned eating sushi. Oh, Lulu, back in the beginning, talks about how every time Luke leaves, he gives her $10,000. Yes. And value. Yes. But then changes it to the Pez. Because you don't want to get addicted to Valium and you can't get addicted to Pez. Uh, yeah, you can. Sugar. But I think it's cute the way that he talks about Lulu. He refers to her. I don't know what he says. The, the young one, the sweet one, something. It yeah. makes it sound like she's a child that has a crush on him. Yeah. And then he goes on talking about how he was tempted to be with her after he found out about this $10,000. Oh, and how Carly was coming on to him. Yes, that was a little not... Totally not believable. Totally not happening believable. just in his head. <laughs> but but I find it odd that he would have that fantasy about Carly. Even. I mean, she's beautiful, but I don't know. The age difference there, and she's like a protected one. She belongs to Sonny and Jason. Yeah. So that was a little shocking to me. I thought that the one about Olivia and Johnny, that it was going to turn out that Johnny was in on it and knew what was going on. Whenever oh. he said he found, walked in the room and like Johnny. Okay, so <laughs> Olivia calls and says that she needs help, that um, her and Johnny. Oh, that story didn't ever continue anywhere in real life either. No. Some of these you could kind of pull into real life something that happened with them so that Spinelli could pretend like it was real or that it actually happened. But this one, um, Olivia and Johnny were going to adopt seven kids yeah and they couldn't do it here in the states and so mysteriously they got this email that was like oh you can come adopt some kids here just come pick them up and whenever they got there johnny was separated from olivia first of all the flags weren't going up with hey we never even right. contacted this place about adoption right it was through the internet you can trace anything was what johnny's answer was, right which is why i thought that he was in on it was because he was not concerned <gasps> oh, okay. at all they just went to pick up these kids seven Yes. Seven, because seven kids. So they sent them a picture and they couldn't pick which one. So they said they'd take all seven because that happened. And so he gets there and he rescues Olivia. And then he goes in to get Johnny. And Johnny is on this comfy bed with all these women around him and yummy food where Olivia had been locked in just like an empty room with nothing. Right. So it made me think that Johnny was in on coming over there and taking over and being part of all that. He wasn't though. They ended up rescuing him and getting away with all of these children, which you don't see in real general hospital right. world. So obviously Spinelli, your story is not correct, but it was cute. It was very cute. I'm just flipping through and seeing which ones we've, I think that we've talked about most of the storylines. It ends saying, but that's for another time. That's a story I know. for another time. And they never, oh, and Robin 
apparently almost lost her license because a professor that would have been a good that would have been a really good story that was that was juicy so the professor basically had a crush on robin and really wanted to get with her and she wouldn't and so he basically said you know what you actually failed my class so now you're not you don't have your degree you don't you could not have qualified to become a doctor right and spinelli took care of it that would have been an amazing storyline because you think that robin so dedicated to all her studies they never talk about other relationships that she had no during the time that she was studying no or when she was over in paris by herself Hmm. so that would have been a good that one was somewhat realistic that would have been really good yeah oh and then the do no (laughs) i like when you say we don't want to talk about the end no (laughs) well but like who he went to help at the end I mean, I guess it's part of the book. Yeah. So he went to help Brenda at the end. But he didn't know Brenda. Right. That was the part I didn't find believable. Whenever she says her name, he's like, oh, Jason in like recommended you or something like that. In Spinelli speak. Oh, Jason has connected us because he knows I can help you, blah, blah, blah. How would he have not known about Brenda? Right. There's no way. Never seen a picture of her. Never. Right. She was with Jax. Sunny and he, and he and married to Jason. Yeah. And she, he has no idea. Yeah. No, 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 no. So I think that is it though. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to give away too, right, too I much. I don't want to tell I mean, all of them. Those were just like my favorite ones, but it, I would love for them to come out with a second one. Cause I loved the way that it was written. And that, like we said, you could honestly hear the character. Yeah. Like she did a really good job of sticking with how they write in the storyline. Yep. And even knowing that Carolyn Hennessy actually engaged with, I mean, obviously she does have scenes with these people, but like she really engaged and went to Jane Elliott and said, Hey, I need you flipping out in the den right now. Right. You know, so that I can write this chapter of the book like Tracy would do, Mm -hmm. you know, that that's really, really cool. So that was another good story. Tracy and Luke. I thought it was sweet that Luke, wasn't really captured. So Tracy takes him and keeps him in a room. I won't go into all the details because again, you should read it, but Tracy captures him because he runs off all the time. So she wants to hold him captive so that she knows where he is and spend some time with him and blah, blah, blah. And Spinelli goes to rescue him. And it turns out that Luke could have gone out the entire time. He was just saying, poor Tracy. And that's that nice. Sweet. That is, that's very that's nice. It's a very weird messed up story, but it was sweet that he would stay anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so that is just a little recap of the book the secret life of damian spinelli you know vanna one more time? as told to diane miller <laughs> written by carolyn hennessy we really have to figure out how we're exactly going to do this book club because we definitely want to engage with you more obviously it's summer so it's difficult to pinpoint right and we changed the dates a couple of times we did we changed the date once and so. that definitely had something to do with this but you know we definitely want to talk to you guys i think the next book that we're going to read is robin's diary so order it on Amazon. I think we posted a link to thrift books mm-hmm. in the group. So if you need a uh, discounted book site, thrift books is awesome. Go to the link. Your coupons on our page too. Yep. 15% off. yep. It's 15% off your first order. And it's, I love thrift books. I'm kind of an addict. And that's I guess it. that's really all that we have to say about the secret life of Damien Spinelli. It's a great read. It's a very quick read. Yes, and I like how it was broken up into different stories. So even if you had to put it down and walk away, it wasn't like you got lost over those next couple of days. You could pick it right back up. Each story was definitely very individual. I mean, like we said earlier, they definitely just made Spinelli ridiculous 10 times what he already... Right. He's cute ridiculous right now, but this was kind of ridiculous, ridiculous. Over, over the top. Yes. So we hope that you read the book. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. And... So have a good weekend and we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at pier54podcast at gmail.com. 